God bless everybody today. It's September 22nd of 2024, and it's been a couple weeks since I did a video. I've been doing a lot of projects, trying to help other people out, so I just uh, wanted to do an update. There's been a lot going on in the last two weeks, especially in the last week, and so let's get into these articles and unpack what's going on out here. First thing I want to cover is this partial lunar eclipse that was on September 17th and 18th, 2024. I believe this was an extremely important event because on September 18th, uh, Jay Powell with the Fed uh, lowered the interest rates by 0.5%, which is an extreme cut. Um, we never see them cut by half points. It's usually by quarters, and then they take it uh, incrementally down to uh, see how that effect happens, and there is a lag on these effects, and so... Uh, some are saying this could be a political move to uh, try to reduce the rates and make people feel a little better before the election to try to get the uh, Democrats in uh, place. Um, I do believe that is a political move also. I've been watching this for some time. And Jay Powell has should have started cutting rates back in March when the two-year rate, uh, two-year bond went down to four and he stayed at 5.5. I've been talking about this forever, that he's following the two-year bond because that's what the banks borrow at. So you need to understand what's happening. The bonds have an inverted at this time. We're at about a 15-point uninversion, and that is also then forcing the 10-year bond to move up. That is going to force everybody's rates on our credit cards, auto, commercial, homes, and everything to move up also as the 10-year starts to melt up and it will melt up and this will gap out tremendously over time uh, sort of think back of the 1970s and the gas lines and the interest rates on homes of 15 to 18 percent and you may understand what i'm talking about if you live through that era the other thing i want to warn you about is we're moving into a cycle we have two solar eclipses on the feast of trumpets of 24 and 25 so there's a gap of time a whole year between the feast of trumpets of 24 and feast of trumpets of 25 on the feast of trumpets the very first day of those events both years we have what we call a solar eclipse or an annular eclipse it is not a good thing to have two blood moons over feast of trumpets a year apart i'm just saying this is not a good sign, and I expect it to get extremely ugly in the next year as we move into this, especially with that lunar eclipse on September 18th, which indicates to me that we are going to see a global meltdown of the global economy, as well as we're going to watch the world go into major distress between this uh, solar eclipse and the one in 25. And this solar eclipse in 2025 would happen on September 21st, which is a partial eclipse. Regardless of whether they're full or partial, it's not a good thing to have a sackcloth covered sun on these very specific days. That's usually a sign of distress, things like that, especially when they fall on the Feast of Trumpets. We're working into a cycle here, and so I just want to, you to be aware of these things. I believe that we are going to watch this break out tremendously in Israel and around the world. Even Ukraine is breaking out. Um, on that front, I want to make a quick note. The United States now is allowing uh, Ukraine to uh, attack into the interior of um Russia with our missiles and so regardless of how anyone wants to look at that to me that's an escalation that's also signaling to um, Russia that we are at war with them even though we're not literally launching the missiles we have given them the ability and the okay to do so and so I believe that will escalate will that affect us over here will Russia do anything to us will um a foreign country attack us in an election cycle possibly maybe to disrupt it 
you never know. The Democrats um, have taken a lot of money from uh, leaders like Putin and uh, Xi and the Ukrainians and things like that. So we don't know what's possible. Um, and I'm just speculating here. You know, I'm not a big fan of this administration. If you go follow the money, you realize they've been in all these countries. And so I made this statement. I'll make it one more time. Um, and I'm sure that I will make it as we go forward. What will the Democrats do if Trump starts to pull ahead in the in the polls and looks like he's going to run into a win, as well as potentially you see the House and the Senate uh, full over to the red side and not the blue side? Are the Democrats going to stand back and lose power? Because I don't believe a communist fascist group like we have in office right now um, this woman knows literally nothing. All you have to do is listen to her for a while, and she knows nothing. And I'm not saying Trump's the go-to guy, but he's much better, and um, I can't follow the Democratic Party in the sense that they want to binary everybody and kill babies and a number of other things, so I just can't go that way. So that's my main reason. You can do whatever you want with that, and I'm sorry if... Um, you have to be somewhat political in this environment just due to the circumstances that we're under. So as we walk into this next year of destruction, I believe, between these uh, solar eclipses at the Feast of Trumpets between 24 and 25, we are going to see some major escalations in the Middle East, and I do mean major escalation. This one right here, this article, and I'm going to show you a number of articles and try to go through them fairly quickly. I'm not going to go actually read the articles. I'll just explain them. If you want to go look at the articles, that's up to you. It just takes too much time. So what happened in the last couple of weeks? A lot of things have happened. And we're going to get into especially the last um, 48 hours, last week especially. What happened here is unprecedented and has also changed the dynamic of war. We have had Hezbollah's, uh, Hezbollah had these pagers that uh, they had because they didn't want to use normal communication lines. They figured that they'd get picked up on these communication lines. So they went to pagers, beepers, and walkie-talkies. Okay, what happened was they had a company that had organized through the Mossad um, Israeli uh, security forces to plant explosives or explosive type devices in these phones beepers and pagers which then would be distributed to the Hezbollah people on the ground and they would detonate them simultaneously or individually depending on how they wanted to do it because they wanted to make sure that not anybody else was getting hurt in general around the area because they are explosive devices. And what happened was they had placed like 20 grams of this explosive device around the battery that would heat up and when it would melt down it would explode the uh, phone pager or the um, beeper and then it would literally injure or kill the person that was holding or had the uh, beeper or phone attached to the side of them. So a lot of people were uh, damaged uh, severely. A lot of people's faces, eyes were, um, you know, uh, mutilated, things like that. I won't go into a lot of details. There's a lot of video out here if you want to go out and watch the gruesome details of this. Um, there's been two waves that have killed 37 people and wounded more than 3,000. And um, the question is, what else is going to happen? Now, this has put Hezbollah on high alert because they've taken a lot of damage over what is happening here. Now, because of this, we've had some massive retaliatory strikes that we're going to go into as we get into these articles. But one thing that happened that was extremely important, due to these explosions of these Hezbollah uh, beepers, pagers, or walkie-talkies, and killing 37 and wounding up to 3,000 of them, they had a huge um, meeting, and an Israeli strike hit them 
and killed a majority of the high-end uh, leaders of Hezbollah. And then uh, the leader of Hezbollah came out and made a statement. So there is a lot happening out here. And we will get into some of those things. That is a major turning point because this is going to escalate and Hezbollah will not sit on this. We've watched them sort of sit back. Iran's sort of licking their wounds because they're their proxy. And now Iran is going to have to determine how they're going to keep Hezbollah in a condition with morale so low, keeping them not wanting to do a similar wave of attacks which is what they were planning in that building. They were planning a similar attack as October 7th, only on the northern front from Hezbollah. Okay, I've talked about this and how 2 Kings 24, 1 and 2 tells you that Turkey would be preparing. And I'm going to get into Turkey too. This is going to be a little longer video. Turkey's also in this game and he's starting to ratchet up the rhetoric. But what has happened here is Hezbollah was going to do a similar attack as nine, uh, October 7th, okay, where they were going to go in and invade, kill a bunch of people, take some more hostages, and go through this process, and we'd spend another year trying to get our people back, and we have not got all these people back, and we've actually lost a number of them. You can go through this article. You can read about the sophistication, how it went through the lines, um, how they planned this thing and we were not involved the united states did not have any clue what was going on okay they did this for a purpose because they didn't want any leaks and we also would have pushed back against what was going to happen the other thing that's a little concerning here is because they're literally reaching out like this um you have to wonder what the international community um like the un and different things are going to think about these types of attacks and how they're going to um be affected and of course we're denying that we had any knowledge and we didn't because why would you you know kamala harris in her infinite wisdom snubbed netanyahu when he came here okay just recently in the last month or so why would Netanyahu care to give them any information so that they could leak it to the other side and then allow them to foil this whole plan? Which is what they would have done. Kamala Harris is backing, in their own way, Hamas. They're supporting Hamas, but yet giving Israel weapons so that they can go kill the people they're supporting down there and it doesn't make any sense because a lot of the people on the democratic side would not be accepted in the muslim hamas communities due to their conditions and i won't go into that anymore but they would kill these people just because of what they are okay and they they're we over here support them not me but these people on the left they support them not knowing that if they knew they were gay or if they um, were binary or whatever you want to call it, I'm not good into the terms, they would kill these people. They would literally throw them off of a building and kill them. And these people are supporting them, sending them money, and demonstrating in our country and on our campuses that they w would want this, I guess. Um, the other thing I bring up is, you know, when you... you marginalized women to the point where you don't know what a woman literally is i can't understand how a woman would democrat would vote as a democrat when we can't they can't tell you what you are you spent 75 years trying to get rights to be an equal player in the room and then they want to negate you to where you don't exist and men can compete against you in sports if you want to vote for that, you go right ahead. That's a perversion, and I'm, I'm not going to go any further with that either. Let's get back on this uh, happening in the Middle East. I'm sorry I'm throwing off a lot of stuff today because there is a lot happening out here, and people need to understand the ramification of what is going on out here right this moment. So this was a major blow to Hamas, or Hezbollah. Look, they lost like 15 major top leaders and the guy that planned this October 7th attack when they hit this missile strike into this area, okay? And then they blew up these 
well, they blew the pagers up, which got these guys all in the same room, which was really stupid. But I guess they thought that was the only way they could do this. And then they sent a missile down on them and killed them all. And so now they have to regroup and try to figure out uh, what's going to happen. But the leader of Hezbollah, or uh, Hamas, yeah, Hezbollah, excuse me, uh, came out and said that um, this is not going to stand. They will do retaliatory. And also you have to think about what Iran would do in this case. You also have to think about all the proxies that are in the room that might um, unleash. You have uh, groups in Syria, Iraq, which is launching missiles at this very time. That's another thing we're going to talk about. You got the Houthis. You have a number of groups um, down in Africa that also could cause issues um, in the, uh, if you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecy, and it affects uh, two or three areas down there. So, so this is the article that I brought up about the Hezbollah getting their bases targeted and killing their top commander, killing 37 of their uh, main guys, but I think about 14 of them were top leaders and things like that. So they've basically eliminated the structure under the leader of Nezalah in the Hezbollah community. He has no people left. They're going to have to bring people up. Now, this attack they were planning was in the area of Galilee. Okay, I just saw that. And so they wanted to make sure that um, as they were planning this meeting, maybe they have a plant in there in Hezbollah through Israel. Somehow they got somebody leaking information. They knew where these guys were. They were going to do a, a um, invasion of Galilee similar to what they did in Gaza into Israel, and then they were going to uh, kill and uh, do what they did and, and uh, capture people and take them back to their site so they could use them as pawns. Because um, that's what they do is they use these hostages as leverage or pawns so that they can use them to get things that they want. You know, if Hamas wanted to stop this war a year ago, they could have given the people back, and I'm sure they would have come up with a way to, to put a ceasefire together, but they've never wanted to give these people back. And I believe the last six people Israel went in and tried to get, they assassinated them. So um, we've never gotten our people back. If you want to know why Kamala has not got her people back, we need to ask these types of questions. She needs some hard questions to be asked of her. If she's going to be the President of the United States, how is she going to deal with some of this? Okay, you know, we don't need to softball this room. Trump needs hard questions. So is Kamala because this one's going to break and it's going to break hard and it's going to break soon. So right after these pagers blew up and they had the... Uh, 37 people killed in the missile strike. Then Hezbollah starting to now volley back rockets, and they've launched at least 100 rockets onto the Israeli side, especially in the northern side, because they want to sort of um, drive the Israelis back, because the Israelis are trying to get their people, their 85,000 people, back in those northern areas, and Hezbollah is pushing back. And they're not going to allow that to happen. And that's another reason they wanted to do this secondary invasion, as we've been talking about in 2 Kings 24, 1 and 2, that we would see Turkey getting ready to come into an invasion, which I say will happen around the beginning of the year. And then we would see these northern and eastern groups of proxies of Iran literally go in and invade and maybe do a sustained invasion. Okay, now they were going to originally go in, take and or take people and kill people and then bring people back over, okay, to their site so you could use them as hostages. I don't know anymore. You know, it looks to me if you look at 2 Kings 24, 1 and 2, um, it's a stained invasion and then Turkey's going to come in around January and compress this whole situation. So I believe that's probably how that's going to happen, but I'm only speculating on some of that based on what the Bible's telling me. Another thing that's escalating and widening this out is we literally are having drones and missiles fired from Iraq um, area. Not Syria, Iraq. So they're moving... Um, targets further and further uh, 
gaps out from Israel and they're attacking them. Uh, we saw the other day where the Houthis launched a missile that hit inside Israel. And so a lot of these proxies have the capacity around Israel to hit them. And like you say, they're, they've got like six or seven fronts they're fighting right now. They're not just fighting Hamas and Hezbollah. They're fighting the Houthis. There's some Arab nations out there, Syria, Iraq. You got nations down in Africa that are going to start to become a problem. I'm, there's just a lot happening out here. And so you just need to understand what's going on. And yes, um, this is expanding quickly. And in this article, it talks about how these Hezbollah chiefs were planning an additional attack, like the October 7th style invasion uh, that killed over 1,200 uh, different uh, Jews. Um, this is Isaac Herzog. You need to keep your eye on this guy, okay? He is the leader of Israel, not Netanyahu. Netanyahu is the prime minister. He's like second third in command i'm not sure exactly how their structure is set up but he is not then you that yahoo is going to play a major part but he's not the leader this is actually the uh leader the 11th leader of israel since the conception of the nation in 1948 may 14th and if you look at enoch's um prophecy it indicates there'll be one after him i've indicated in my paradigm 2030 that Isaac Herzog would be captured in the first original siege. There's two sieges on Jerusalem, um, one after Turkey removes Iran and the Kurds from power, and Daniel 8 completes. He comes back um, in 2026, but we are going to see an original siege um, the spring of uh, 2025 when Turkey comes down because Turkey's going to invade around January of this next year. He's going to drive down, as I've said many, many times. I found in my last video, well, it was two videos ago, I believe, I did a thing on um, Isaiah that when you go to Isaiah uh, 34 it indicates that there's a date stamp there of uh, March and so we would see they attack an invasion by Turkey into Syria, into Syria by January an attack on Lebanon Tyre by March a completion of that attack by July based on Alexander Great's movements as I've indicated in the past and then they would go through Israel and end up in Gaza in October of 2025 that will then go down into Egypt. Egypt will capitulate. They will not go against Turkey. Turkey then goes to Tyre. Then they go back over to Erbil, uh, Iraq. They remove the Kurds and uh, destroy the majority of them around October of 25. That collapses down to Shush, where the Kurds or the Medes align with the Persians on Iran. These two groups form. Once that alignment happens, Turkey comes over and smashes both of them. That completes Daniel 8. That then forces Turkey to then move back across the Middle East to Israel for the secondary siege. And that would happen around March of 2026. And if you look at the paradigm, which I'm getting ready to show you, March of 2026 is an extremely ugly, terrible time and like I say, we're falling between these two solar eclipses of the uh, Feast of Trumpets of 24 and 25. So this is going to get really ugly as we move forward here in a potential signing of a treaty with the nations in April of 2026. And so this is starting to break down. And if you can't see that, if you're not paying attention, then I don't know what to tell you. If you can't see this coming, then I don't know what to to tell you just get your oil ready physically and spiritually mentally food prep everything needs to be ready in the next six months or this is going to break down the global markets are getting ready to happen you got third quarter ending going into fourth quarter the jobs are going to start to fall off i think your sales for christmas season are going to be horrendous that will lead you into the next year with terrible job numbers and massive layoffs at the beginning of next year, okay, in 2025, January, as Erdogan's getting ready to do an invasionary process in that same breath. 
And actually, I'm going to take you back for a second, and we'll come back to the uh, paradigm chart. Um, Erdogan, this is it. This is probably the most one of the most important pieces on here. So I wanted to make sure I for, didn't forget it. Erdogan calls for Islamic co uh, countries to unite against Israel due to the escalation of not only Hamas but the Hezbollah front that's getting ready to open. And I'm now I can only imagine after 3,000 people were injured and 37 or so people were killed in their major structures that we would see that Erdogan is not going to sit here much longer and he's getting ready to go down into Syria to do something about this. You've got to watch this guy. Um, he's indicating that Netanyahu is like Hitler and these are fascists and they have to be eliminated. And I mean eliminated. So this is why Netanyahu is pushing back so hard. Everybody wonders why he has to eliminate all these threats because he, they won't exist if they don't. So just realize that you have this. Um, this happened on September 8th. So this has been a couple weeks. By the time I put the last video out, this guy came out and said, hey, I don't like what's going on over there. We're seeing Israel expand. And partially what he's worried about is an invasion into Turkey from Israel, of all things. That's what he's telling everybody. Okay? He's stating that Israel would invade Turkey. That's his premise. Okay? So just realize, this guy is on a mission from God to do what he's going to do, and that is to put Israel under judgment. It's just that simple. So let's go look at the paradigm real quick. And I know I'm trying to make this a fairly quick video, so hopefully I'm not um, you know, stating things wrong or anything like that. I always try to be as honest and truthful with you guys as I possibly can. If you go to my eschatology page, this is a free Wix site. I always say that. We don't sell anything out here except information to get you prepared. Okay. Go to endofdayssurvival.com. Come down here and I want to show you two charts. We're going to look at Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's statue. I made a change there, uh, which probably would also adjust to a number of the other charts. But anyway, it runs through. My major adjustment was in this chart. Um, about the ten nations and which ten nations they are uh, have made an adjustment there and then we'll go into the paradigm real quick so if you click on this file it will bring up the uh, Nebuchadnezzar statue in chapter 2 of Daniel okay now I have been putting up dates on the dates on the charts so you can see when I've actually manipulated them and changed the charts the only thing I really wanted to show you on this chart was that I've come down and I've actually adjusted the 10 nations and so that you can actually see what those 10 nations are that are going to be affected in the Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecies. I believe these are the 10 nations. I have adjusted two. So when you get to the feet of uh, iron and clay, we talk about the Islamic nations which are getting ready to form and go against Israel. The ones I've changed are basically, I've uh, adjusted it to where we have Syria and Iraq in this. Um, I had originally had a couple other nations, I won't go into that. Um, I've rethought through this many, many years, and I believe these will be the ten nations that are going to affect Israel the most. Um, I may be wrong on a couple of them, but in general, I believe these are right. If you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, it gives you the majority of them in the book. Um, or the Bible, and so you can see what those nations are. But this is basically the area of Alexander the Great, as well as the Ottoman Empire, and so it should fit in that footprint uh, easily. Then we'll go to the second chart, which is the Paradigm 2030 chart, which is a paradigm that I found in the Bible. Okay, this is no messing around. Three kings of the past reflect exactly the time that three leaders are in position today to the dates and there's date stamps in the Bible based on these three kings that indicate what is coming up and if you lay it out in the Shemitah cycle between 2022 and 2029 with the cutoff of the Feast of Trumpets 
um, of 2029 taking you into 2030. Also, a 6,000 year gap of time between Adam and 2030. 2,000 years between uh, 30 AD when Jesus uh, was crucified and 2030. You have your 2,000 year gap. Um, we are in the last moment in history of time, and you need to understand. I will give you the date uh, count now. Uh, as of September 23rd, because I'm working off the Jewish calendars, which ends up going from the evening of the 22nd, starting the new day, which would take you into the 23rd. The date count to the Feast of Trumpets of 2029 is 1,814 days that you have to have your oil in your lamp. So just get ready for this because this one is getting ugly quickly and it will take you by storm. You may not have the time to get ready as you watch these global markets getting ready to collapse. And look, when Jay lowers rates at 0 .0 or 0 0.5 and cuts these major cuts and he's probably going to do the same thing in november and december to try to get him back to the two-year rate which is below four it's about three and a half right now uh, that's the bond rate he's going to put some serious pain down on everybody here as we watch people literally get literally businesses close and people get told to go home um, and you're going to see the 1970 uh happen again back in like the 1973 era two things are going to happen if turkey comes into the game and this starts to break out by the end of the year hyperinflation which is what jay does not want and if he lowers rates to the extent he's going to do it i said he should have already been doing this six months ago so he's way behind the ball it's going to hyperinflate us because inflation will come back like a nightmare and turkey will come down and that will change the fuel prices out here and brent and the oil prices will go up uh two or three x uh maybe four x like they did back in the uh arab crisis embargo back in the 1970s which brought the majority of that pain on this country and you saw those gas lines out there that uh you know you get 10 gallons you could wait two days to get 10 gallons of gas and you spent hours in lines waiting for it. It was insane. So when you come to Paradigm uh, 2030 chart, you click on that, it takes you to this additional chart. And this is an extremely important chart that I built those date stamps out of the Bible on. So this is what the chart looks like. It takes you through the next five years or 1814 days to the Feast of Trumpets. Then we're raptured on September 10th of 2029 based on my study of Hebrew calendars and how the Jewish calendars work in Leviticus 23 and all the different things that I've shown you guys. You need to understand that God has a set plan. And if people are telling you, you can't know the day or time, they just don't know what the heck they're talking about. Okay, I'm just going to be playing with it. He's unveiling this to you right now so you can see it because we're here. Okay, Daniel said it would be sealed till the end. We are here. We're getting ready to move into the end, and you need to understand what's coming up here, guys. Okay, now this is the chart, and I know I'm pumped tonight because there's a lot going on out here, guys. you got to understand what's happening so you can get ready, or you're going to put yourself in a terrible condition here as we move forward. So let's blow this chart up, and I'll show you where I'm at. We're going to be approximately in this area right here as we move forward into this area here okay um so i want you to see on the chart where i'm going to blow this up to okay so we're getting ready to walk into the feast of trumpets at 24 okay and like i said you have that blood moon event followed by two solar eclipses okay you've got one on october 2nd of 2024 on uh, annual solar eclipse on the feast of trumpets then you have another one which falls on the day or so right before the feast of trumpets um so you have this year gap so that falls on september 21st of 2025 you have another solar eclipse 
and the Feast of Trumpets is right after that. And so I'm very concerned between the Feast of Trumpets of October, and see this one's on October 2nd, this one's on, on September 21st, they're like the day or right before as you go in, now this one's actually on the Feast of Trumpets because you go from the 2nd to the 3rd um, of the evening. This one seems to be a day off or so, but regardless, you're walking into the Feast of Trumpets here, and so that's extremely important as we move into this next year. In this period of time, I've indicated that we would see a first siege on uh, Israel, okay, around March. And this was potentially the time we would see Isaac Herzog uh, potentially captured um, in this first attack. So that would happen between, now think about this, if Israel, if, or excuse me, if Turkey goes down and takes Tyre, Lebanon out by July of 2025, as I've indicated, he would end up in um, Israel around July. And so I talk about how that potentially could affect Isaac Herzog as we move into that uh, period of time. They would end up in Gaza around October, and then he would end up back um, as he goes through the Middle East, takes Iran and all these different things like that out. We would potentially see um, a six seal event around this March 4th event after 10 nations form against Israel and attack them um, and are given that hour of power to do so. And that is a 15 day uh, period of time. So extremely important. So I just want you to realize that um, the next year, year and a half, as we get into the signing of the Treaty of Death on March uh, 30th of 2026, and that would then take you into the uh, 1260 days, um, which you're going to see down here, okay, to the Feast of Trumpets. Let's blow this out just a second so you can see it a little better. So when you get to March 30th, okay, it takes you into the 1260 days. That runs you to the Feast of Trumpets of 2029, which is on September 10th of 2029. That date stamp or time that I give you of the 1814 days is from today to the Feast of Trumpets of September 10th of 2029, in my opinion, is a rapture event, because that would then take you into the Tishri 1, that would take you out of this Shemitah cycle into the new Shemitah cycle. It also would cut off the marriage of the uh, Fall Feast into the Millennial um, Kingdom, and so, in my opinion, um, this is when that occurs. Um, so I hope uh, this clarifies some things for you. Um, like I say, you can print this chart off if you want. Um, it is getting harder and harder to manipulate this chart, um, so I will be adding some things. Another thing I'd like to indicate on this chart is around this March period of 2025, I believe that was... Um, Two videos ago, I showed that this would be approximately the time that Tyre, Lebanon would be under siege by Turkey, and then that would basically continue until July, and then we would see an attack on Israel, because for Turkey to get down into Gaza, they have to go through Israel, because there's nowhere else to go except between uh, Jerusalem and Jordan, so they have to go that way. So, God bless everybody. Put your oil in your lamp. I've been talking about this forever. If you think you're going to be pre-raptured, my question is, why are you in the middle of the seals right now and all this destruction is happening in front of you when the churches have been telling you all that you are not going to deal with any of this and that when John's removed in Revelation 4.1, you're removed with him and I'm sorry, it's not happened. So you need to question your leaders at this time and ask them why that is the case and why they're teaching this terrible, um, terrible teachings out of the Bible as they have. So God bless everybody. Be safe out there. 
watch, prepare, and get ready. This one is getting ready to really break hard. So good luck.